This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Ho Jeff. Save 25% with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the history of bad ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 519. I'm Jason. I'm Blake. Oh, okay. And I'm Brian. Hey! I mean, Jeff not here threw me off. The Nows are not here this week. Yeah. So, um, that's okay. We got this. I feel like we got this under control. We do? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But hit we're going to try. Hit the rim shot. Uh, I can't find it. Hold on. I'm in charge of the board this week. Hit the oh, laugh button. No. Uh, this I'll... is going to be awesome. Sad trombone. How about that? Yeah. That's not bad. Room shot. There we go. Room shot. Go. Hey. And you got the air horn. It is basketball season starting. Is it? Yeah. Huh. You know why? Because we have a fucking mid-season tournament for the NBA. Nobody cares about a mid-season tournament. Why do we have a mid-season tournament? I was tournament? talking about NBA. I was talking about NCAA. Eh, yeah. I don't talk watch to me NBA. In fe- talk to me in February. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll be excited. Mid-ser- well, they have to do a mid-season tournament NBA because nobody's watching the NBA. Nobody cares anymore. Nobody does. Um, I don't get these fucking mid-season tournaments. Soccer does it. I don't understand it. MLS. Uh, uh, all right, hold on. There's tournaments throughout the season in soccer. But why would you put your players out there Several to play them. them? Why would you Several let your players do that? They could get injured. Yeah. I don't get that. You don't play the same guys all the time. That's where you break out new talent and see what they can do, too. That's stupid. I mean, if I you like advance it. in the tournaments and do well, yeah, it's pretty good, too, but... And our MLS what you're playing for our MLS team is going for the is playing for the Eastern Conference Championship FCC this, baby is that this week Saturday yeah, Saturday, Saturday night against yeah. Columbus yeah. Columbus Crew um, here's the thing that I don't like again hey we played Philadelphia for two games which I don't understand the first round is two best of three no that's New York Red Bulls is that who they played yeah okay sorry yeah go I, ahead I don't MLS, get that MLS does. Nothing by FIFA rules, so it's weird. I don't get it. They do their own thing. It's Americanized. Uh, other FIFA uh, national leagues. What do I mean by national leagues? I mean like English Premier League, mm-hmm. Spanish League. They've all filed complaints with FIFA about how we do things here in the states, and they just don't understand that one. We just don't give a fuck, and yeah. two, we do what the fuck we want to do. You can't really tell Americans what to do. No, ever. No. Ever. Mm-mm. But here's the thing. So we played New York, best of three series. New York Red Bulls. Yeah, the first opening salvo. Well, first of all, they had to play a wild card win and in yes. in order to get into the playoffs. That's New York. For the final, yeah, final okay. spot. <clears throat> and then the first round is everybody does a best two of three. But every other round is one game. One and out. I don't get that. Neither do I. And then, after you played the first round, it's a three-week break. Yes. That's the stupidest, dumbest shit. Hey, even, we if got you, the ma- even if you have players on double yellow cards or red cards where they're eliminated from the next mm-hmm. match, three weeks. 
And I don't get that because mm. here's the issue. How do I? You kill all momentum in that playoff run. <clears throat> like for yes. everybody. The cities, the teams. Yeah. Like, hey, we won the first round. Well, right. I'll see you in December, Joe. I yeah, mean, I, it, it, it's, I, I was, you know, we're season ticket holders for FCC. I was mm. at the Philadelphia game. Mm-hmm. Or is it, I'm sorry, match. Yes. And uh, we won it in the final minutes of the second half. We mm-hmm. finally scored. And, and you're right. They come out. They're not in sync. You haven't played anything meaningful for three weeks of yeah. practice. And it's just, you know, I think both teams look very flat in the beginning. Yeah. And it just sucked. Well, um, we won, so that was good. Yeah. But the Eastern Conference is an all-Ohio conference. Yeah. Columbus uh, is coming down to Cincinnati for the Hell is Real match. Who's on the Western Conference? Uh, teams west of the Mississippi. That's all I know. <laughs> Is that no? Okay, who's in the Western Conference Championship right now? What teams specific? Okay, uh, Seattle <laughs> maybe one because they're usually there. Seattle and LA is the only teams uh, I know. West. Kansas Sporting Kansas City. They have a team. Houston. No. Oh, yeah. Does Portland have a team? Yeah. Okay. They're the Timbers. Oh, what's Seattle? Well, they're not Supersonics. Kraken. That's hockey. The, no, that's um, hockey. Brian, do you know? It looks like the Western Sounders? Conference Seattle is uh, LA, mm-hmm. FC, and Houston. All right. What's Houston's? Oh, uh, Houston Dy- Dynamo. Dynamo. Yes. That's a horrible name. Well, yeah, yes. Dynamic back I don't like day. FC teams either. I don't like when they don't have nicknames. Like, I need Football FC Club Cincinnati. Club Cincinnati. Yeah, I don't fucking care. Give me a nickname. Give me a nickname. Sporting Kansas City. Yeah, I don't like that. Philadelphia Union, which the initials are PU. I mean, I know that New York's sponsored or by Poo. the Red Bulls because they paid for it, but at least yeah. that's a name. Like, that's a threatening name. The Red Bulls. Okay, sure. They're yeah. threatening. But, yeah, like, it, it, it's, it just comes from the traditional. I don't like it. Uh, European football yeah. known to us as soccer. It just comes from their athletic clubs and the way they name things over there. We mimic them here. I mean, the whole team mascot nickname stuff is, I don't know, maybe it is mostly an American phenomena where you got, you know, New York Yankees. Yeah. You, you know, Miami Marlins. You know, when you try and translate that into European style football, you know, like, I mean, they do have nicknames, like the creative nicknames in the Premier League, like, the Reds, the <laughs> Blues, the, you yes. know, the Spurs. Well, you know, they do have them there, but they're not like... Mascots. Yeah, because on Twitter, aka X, it says trending Reds. I'm like, oh, yeah. what, do, what do the Cincinnati Reds do? And you click it and it's like, what's this fucking soccer team? I don't know yeah, this. Exactly. So, but, yeah, the, the, the it's, it's, you know, a lot of those come from like official sporting clubs. Like, like Salt Lake City, like they try and like you know binge on the uh spanish real you know mm-hmm. real salt lake and you're like you know, like you're mimicking la liga some of the teams mimic the premier league name some of them mimic bundesliga it, it, it just depends on i need what they nicknames. Want to go for i need a city and i need a nickname that's what i need fcc that doesn't count it's stupid queen city Reginald. You know, I mean, we had a cool looking mascot. It's a lion with a sword. Yeah. Why can't we be Sensei Lions or Sensei Monarchs? Why can't we be something like that? Yeah. That's what I'm going to call them from now on. No FC Cincinnati. Sensei Monarchs. Monarchs. That'll work. Change approved. Brian, what do you think? Yep. Do you like soccer? Do you like FC Cincinnati? Nah. (laughs) Whatever. There are winners. That's all you got to say. They went from worst to first over the past couple of years. Do you feel, not to keep soccer talk here, but do you feel like the city cares? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think? There's a lot of FCC. Okay. And here's, here's what you don't know, Jason. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, sorry. Please enlighten In me. In the nation, uh-huh. Cincinnati uh-huh. is actually a very big soccer region. Yes. The Southwest Ohio and actually you know Columbus and Cleveland, by the way, too. You go to national tournaments and national teams and et cetera, uh, Ohio has a very good reputation of kicking out high quality soccer clubs okay. at you know, you know, kids levels, mm-hmm. club levels, and et cetera. Like for example, University of Akron was the NCAA soccer champions for several years in a row. Oh. Did you know that? No, I did not. Because you don't follow. No. That's right. I understand. 
That's okay. I'm excited for FC Cincinnati. I'm excited yeah. for the city. I will always root for city, like yeah. our city. Well, th- well, think about it. The I, owners shell out money for the team. Yep. You know they pay for players. They bring them in, and it's 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 paid off. You know, yep. and um, you know we've got uh, the supporter shield, which is the best regular season mm-hmm. record. Which uh, in the year Euro- in the European soccer leagues all over means you won and season is over. We mm-hmm. do this wacky playoff shit because <laughs> that's what we fucking do. We have the best coach. We got this. He got coach of the year. Yeah, like I said again, mm-hmm. you know when we first came into MLS from the USL, we were worse. We sucked for a couple of years, and then we got a spark last year, and then we got then this year we kicked ass. You know, Lucho, uh, for example. Uh, player of the year. So yep. we got uh, Mayazga, Defender of the Year. I mean, when you're kicking ass, you get a lot of awards. Okay. And hopefully we can carry that over could, to a championship. Could you tell the Reds, the Cincinnati Reds, that if you put money towards the team, people will come? I'm just saying. <sighs> it would help. It'd be really nice. Yeah. It'd be really nice. Well, you know, finally, you know, Mike Brown opened up his wallet, too. And look what happened. Look what happens. Joe Burrow got hurt. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but, but you guys went to a Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And to the AFC Championship two years in a row. Yeah, exactly. Not I so mean, much this you know, year. When you, when you start paying attention and start shelling at the dough for performance and for quality, that's what happens. You actually make money. What? What? That's crazy. Hold on a second. You spend money to make, make money. money. That is... If, I've never so where heard are the that. underwear gnomes fit in all this? Uh, step three. That's step three. Oh, step, no, step three. three is profit. Profit. Step one is um, yeah. stealing underwear. Yeah, that's a good call. See? Yeah. Um, Brian, how are you doing over there? Oh, I'm doing great. What about soccer talk? You excited? Uh, no. No. Oh. Not really. Everybody loves soccer talk. I, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> let's, I'm, let's talk I, I'm more happy. soccer. So speaking of all these leagues oh, and geez. stuff. Here we go. You know, Champions League plays this week. So he takes a week oh. off of the regular Premier Leagues or two, and they all play against each other. Okay. So that's cool. I didn't <laughs> that's finish, all you have? That's right. I didn't finish Welcome to Wrexham, by the oh, way. Oh, hold on. Let me get my things here. And the last I checked, uh, Wrexham was in third place in the National League, which is like the fourth yeah. minor league down but they made yes. it into the big money leagues but you you read some of the news articles and stuff they're 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 coming across a lot of problems and you know expanding the stadium they're, they're they're realizing european bureaucracies and all that kind of fun stuff so they're having problems expanding the stadium they're having problems with some of the contracts and the names now they got may have to change the names because of you know the welsh laws and all that kind of stuff and it's just goofy well, Which we'll probably get next year and next season. There is another season coming yeah. of Wrexham. Yep. So I'm excited about They're that. signed off for um, season three. We're half, probably a little bit more than halfway through the season. We got to finish it. Yeah. Um, we got to figure We got to watch great, it. Great series. They have a human interest angle. It's a great documentary on, on every, crew. On every episode, yep. and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Brian, let's get to you. Yep. What soccer did you watch this weekend? Nah. <laughs> None. Oh, okay. Did you watch anything this week? Um, I did. Okay. Come back to me. Okay. I saw 20 minutes of Good Burger 2. Welcome <laughs> to Good Burger, home <laughs> of the Good Burger. Okay, take your order. Watch some of that while we were, uh, just, it was just me and the boys tonight um, while my wife took my daughter to volleyball. And uh, so my youngest was like, let's watch Good Burger 2. <laughs> I love the first the one. Oh, did he see I lo- the original? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he okay. has. All right. Uh, Cal? That was rough. <laughs> right, 20 I, minutes in, it was rough. I have a question. Yes. There is a comedy reel social media out there, mm-hmm. and it looks like Kel from Good Burger. Uh-huh. But then they also have these sexy uh, Wendy's and sexy McDonald, Ronald, lady female Ronald McDonald, a KFC guy. What? And they got, you haven't seen any no. skits? No. I thought it was. It looks like the real Kel. That's that. That's what it could be. For a loop. But yeah, there's. Uh, you know, you see it like on Reels because I don't have any other media except for Facebook because I'm a stupid old fogey dude. That's all right. You're not missing much. I don't want. You don't. You're not missing media. much. I don't want any more social media. You're not missing much. But uh, you haven't seen that. No. 
I need to see this. You should. Maybe I can pull something up on a break. How come Keenan so, got onto Saturday Night Live, but he couldn't get his buddy Kel onto Saturday Night Live? I don't know, but here's my next question. I don't find Keenan all that as talented of a Saturday Night Live character that you, know, you should be on there for 20 years. <laughs> unless, unless you're trying to bridge an age generation gap from Nickelodeon, which I, I think was a genius, brilliant marketing ploy by correct. the way, by you know, the old man, what's his name? Lauren Michaels. Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. Do you think Michaels has just forgotten that he's on the show? <laughs> like, I don't think so. No, okay. <clears throat> Keenan's funny. Yeah. But. He's all right. But it is funny that he's been there for 20 years. And if you were doing like the top 20 all time great. Yeah. Sketches. No. Uh, uh, comedians on the SNL? show. Yeah. SNL. He may be 21. He might be. I don't <laughs> know if 20? he's in the top 20. He's got longevity. There's that's for sure. I enjoy him. I'd put him in the top fifteen. Really? Yeah. Why? Name me a sketch right off the top of your head. Um, what's up with that? What's up with that is pretty good. I'll All give right. you that. What's I've, up with that? Uh, I've never seen it. Okay. Uh, he does an incredible Steve Harvey. <laughs> he does a good Steve Harvey. Movie. Very funny. <laughs> he does. Family and Charles Feud? Barkley. Family Barkley. Feud parody. Yep. He does Steve Harvey and Charles right. Barkley well. I will give you that. I still, so, you, don't, you don't see that out in the zeitgeist. Though. No, no, no. Like you see other not as much characters. No, some of the earlier stuff you did, but now I feel like it's not as popular as it has been. Yeah, um, I feel like you have a lot of the um, uh, what is it? Um, like the uh, Sandberg stuff that used to be like the Lonely Island crew. Not that you have that, but you have like those guys. That's the thing that you see on the social media more. Yeah, um, I think part of my thing with him is he is as good or bad as the surrounding cast that he has. I like he can bring can see it. he can he if the cast is really good he's kind of just there. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, when the cast is bad, he is above above because you know it's a good evaluation. Here's so him and Daryl Hammond are the longest tenured. Uh, Daryl Hammond, by far, better than... That's what I think. Yeah. I agree. I think Daryl Hammond might be better. Uh, I mean, without a doubt. I Just right off the top of my head. He's a good announcer, too, now. Yeah. <laughs> he's on the show as the announcer. Oh, yeah? He took over? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he took over about uh, five years the ago, voice, I think. Yeah, from what's his name? Yeah. He passed away. I will say, I've said this before, but uh, Daryl Hammond's book about his time on Saturday Night Live is phenomenal. Well, uh, he did a lot of drugs. Interesting. Uh, yeah, he's had. he's been through some rehabs and... yeah. Uh, um, yeah, you hear him talk about some of his stories and stuff. You're like, dude, Daryl Hammond? Yeah. Like, what? Um, his book is really well done. Uh, I was, I like any of that Saturday Night Live behind the scenes. Skit. Whether you like Saturday Night Live or not, I like seeing the inner workings of that stuff, uh, of any of those shows. That's why I love Sports Night. It was just cool to see, like, mm -hmm. and it was fictional, but it was still neat to see the behind. Daryl's was kind of like, what, fiction? Nonfiction? It was nonfiction. Yeah, this is me on drugs behind the scenes. Yes, pretty much. Alcohol That's it was all alcoholism. It was alcoholism. It was alcoholism. Yeah, and he did do drugs, too. Yeah. He did a little drugs. I mean, uh, alcohol was his big I, thing. For the longest time, I feel like that was a prerequisite for being on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I mean, Have all of them. kind of addiction? Yeah. yeah. All of them. Mm -hmm. Not Phil At Hartman. All the his greats. wife. <laughs> Phil Hartman's wife was uh, addicted, but yeah, not him. But yeah, and then look what happened to Phil. No, I agree. I, I It's kind of like wrestling. All those guys in the 80s and 90s, like, yeah. they went through some hard times. And then you're like, this guy died at 51. Well, no shit. He did a pound of yeah. cocaine a day. <laughs> his yeah. heart's going to give out. Yeah. yeah. Jim Belushi? John Belushi, uh, uh, Eddie Guerrero, oh, Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> you know, yeah. Chris Farley. Yeah. 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 Much younger than that, but yeah, that guy had a lot of drugs in him. Yeah. He did a lot. His brother's still touring though. Yeah. So Kevin. Right? Yeah. 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 So he actually came to my small town a couple year uh, about six months ago. So the blue note. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody That's, loves the blue note. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, great hey. facility. The sign's falling down, but Hey, <laughs> we're not going to replace that. It looks hey, like a shit storm. <clears throat> driving home last week. Yeah. You know, you had Jackal up here in town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ja uh, <laughs> that's driving like, by. That's like what, every that month. Pluto, right? I'm not Brian's not wrong. The They're here. They're, they're, they are here probably yeah. every six really? months. Yes. Easily. I was driving if not, by. Yeah. I was they going, might work in town. I was going, <laughs> I mean, they I was could, going, I was going to, yeah, they work if, at the Remke. <laughs> if they're not, if they're not at the Blue Note, they're at Bogarts. Yeah. Like one of the two. Bogarts yeah. is still around? 
Oh yeah, really? Yeah, they yeah, remodeled the and everything. Yeah, that, it's actually you can walk around. And your feet don't make sticky sounds. <laughs> they've got to the like two anymore. private suites. Now. Wow. Yeah, it, good for them. It's nice. Uh, the, the, I was going through the roundabout and I'm like, what the hell's? I, all of a sudden, there's parking overflow parking. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell's going on? I drove by and I looked and I was like, jackal. <laughs> what? Jackal? Do they play chainsaws again? Makes this, brings this big from crowd out. Apparently so. Everybody loves Jackal. Yeah, yeah they, you can see them at Remke. They, they're they're gross. They're yeah. clerks. <laughs> I think Jesse James will be signing bottles of bourbon there <laughs> for Christmas. So we have a local grocery store that used to be like Kroger's is the big one, but we have a local gro- grocery store that has slowly lost stores. Like they've closed stores, yeah. and so it's Remke. Well, they're family owned now. Uh, I think there's only three in the city, and it's a very old school type of store grocery store. I love it because I go in there for just for like small little things here and there, um, and it's a little bit closer than Kroger's. But it's always funny because they got sold, and then like for three weeks in August, they're like, "We cannot sell alcohol. We have been sold to a new family, and the liquor license takes three weeks to transfer over. So no beer, please. You cannot order beer." I was like, "Damn it." But it's just funny. That's how small it is. Like, no. yeah, Kroger's never would have had issues with that. <laughs> They're like, no, we got beer. But <laughs> Remke's like, sorry, we can't sell beer. <laughs> Three weeks. My bad. It's rough. Hey, they have taps, though. They have taps there you can get. You yeah. Can get yeah, you can get growlers. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, good for them. They also have popcorn for 99 cents, like yeah. a bag of popcorn. <laughs> I know. So. so your kids read one down here. Right? Yes, yes. Right. Um. And we also have in uh, the t- little town across uh, next to us, we have an IGA. If people are uh, listening from out of state. You still have an IGA. There is an IGA, and it literally looks like the grocery store from The Mist, the movie yeah. The Mist. Uh, same thing. Like, it is the smallest little thing. It's like 12 aisles. It's usually uh, IGA. Isn't it like a uh, farmer's collective grocery yeah, market? Yeah, it used to be. Yeah, it used to be. I don't know what it is now, but it was just fine. Like, I've gone in there once in a blue, like, maybe three times in my life, and it's like, oh, my God, these are off-off brands. Like, I don't even yeah. know what kind they're selling. Like, what type of cheese sticks are these? <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Um, and are they real? Yeah. I always liked the little small mom-and-pop grocery stores, like, the, from the old times and that. But it literally looks like something from the mist. Yeah, yeah down where my parents live in summer, well, they're east of Somerset, mm-hmm. a very small town in uh, Kentucky. Uh, they have an IGA. Really? That's like their... Is that their main one? Yeah, I mean, you if you go like into Somerset, like mm-hmm. twenty five minutes from them, then there's you know Aldi, Walmart, Kroger. They have mm-hmm. two, they have two Krogers actually. Oh, uh, two Kroger, a Walmart, Aldi, but like right in their little community, Ten. they have Family Dollar, Dollar <laughs> General, IGA, <laughs> we, and a gas station. We have three dollar stores here. Yeah, <laughs> it's like why, why it's. I don't get it, but uh, a contractor that we do work with at work, uh, his company gets contracts to build Dollar Generals. Really? And, you know, every time we see him, he's like, oh, got three more coming up. <laughs> well, of course, because they built three a week. Yeah. he's. It's just so funny listening to him talk about that. Uh, but, dollar 25 now when you yeah. go in there. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> eh. I want my I want my money back. Twenty five store. It is. It is too late to change the name. Damn it! <laughs> we got the trademarks. <laughs> we would lose the liquor license. Um, yeah. So yeah. So long story short, don't watch Good Burger too. How, <laughs> or the first your, twenty minutes of it. Yeah. <laughs> the first twenty minutes. It's so bad. How's your Thanksgivings? Yeah, it's fine. Good. Yeah, I'm not a big oh. Thanksgiving fan. No. I enjoy it, but uh, it's never or I don't. There's never enough time. Mm. Usually oh. for me, at least with work. You know, I get the day and that's it. So You're watching everybody else's dogs that are going on Thanksgiving. Yeah, very, very, very busy week last week for me. Good. So making money, very tired. You still, still, do still you guys give special uh, l- dinners for your dogs on? We do here? not. Okay, we okay. do not. Some was, places do. Yeah, I saw that on social media. Yeah, I still don't know um, what they were serving. It just looked like Thanksgiving meal. I mean, there are a handful of the fixings that are mm. good for dogs the pumpkin the turkey green beans that kind yeah. of stuff um my dogs like green beans yeah they like green beans 
No, no we did not uh, actually serve a Thanksgiving meal. My, uh, I'm not a big Thanksgiving food fan. Like, so we went to my in-laws, and we ate at two. And because her one uh, brother, her brother has to go to his uh, his wife's side of the family, so we eat at two o'clock. I had maybe two scoops of potatoes, a little scoop of dressing, and like a little sli- a little slice of turkey. Like I'm not a big turkey fan. Mm. I like potatoes, mashed potatoes, but like I'm not a big green yeah. bean casserole fan. I'm are not. The, are the people making it good cooks though? Because yeah, I, that I will... makes a big difference. Because I'm I'm blessed with. You know, a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law, mm-hmm. you know, one who's great at cooking and smoking and grilling. The other one is just very good at cooking, period. Mm-hmm. And I enjoy it because I'm not cooking because I'm the one that cooks in my house. And so I go and eat these meals and I'm like, oh, man, these are good stuff. Man. So yeah. I look forward to it. Uh, my father-in-law does a good job with the turkey. I'm not, again, not a turkey fan. Yeah. It's it's decent turkey. It's good turkey. Uh, it, but it's just, that's the only thing I ate. And it wasn't like, oh, you know, I'm mad. It's like, I'm just, I don't like none of that stuff. I don't like sweet potatoes. I don't like any of that stuff. I don't like corn pudding. Sweet potatoes are okay. Ugh. I'm not a big, big, I'm not a big mashed potato guy either. I'm not a big potato guy, period. But, you know, I, I, I like getting, hey, you get a good stuffing, you get a good gravy, and you get some of those uh, tasty turkeys. But, and all that stuff. And some good, you know, uh, our, our, da- one, our one daughter's God, she's become a uh, macaroni and cheese connoisseur. Ooh. So she makes, she doesn't just make fucking craft mac and cheese. She's making all this fancy shit with crumbs mm. and shit on top. <laughs> and it's fucking good, man. Yeah. I'm fucking, I'm like, I, give it to me. Because other than that, when they cook, it's three, four, seven, one, 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 one. We had that tonight. The roses. We had that tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, my thing is, uh, I'm not even a big dessert fan of Thanksgiving. Like, I'm not a big pumpkin pie fan Neither at all. Neither am I. I'm um, not a big dessert guy either. But I, I'm not a big dessert guy to begin with. Pumpkin pie, not good, but there was a triple chocolate pecan pie this year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I love chocolate, so it was pretty good. Uh, Other I, than that, I'm, yeah, you're right. I'm not a big dessert guy unless it's like gelato. I came home, uh, we came home about 6.30. With this pack of Oreos. Oh, we're opening this this week. Me. Thank you. Java chip Oreos. All right, but, anyway, um, yeah, but yeah, I came home at 630. We came home and I was like, I am starving because I just didn't eat much. And my wife's like, did you not get like two plates or any? I was like, I didn't hardly eat anything. So on Thanksgiving night, I had a ham and cheese sandwich at seven o'clock at night. It's like, that's my Thanksgiving meal. <laughs> and again, it's not like it's bad food. It's just it's just uh, Thanksgiving's not a big thing for me. I'm not a, a huge fan. Right, if you got. People, if you divvy up all the responsibilities to dishes like we usually do, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it, and they do their special and they do what they yeah. do really well, I I like it. It's, it's very good. I do like this time of the year, though. I'm very happy. I love the holidays. I love this time of the year. I love the cold. Uh, I came out of the gym last yesterday morning, yeah. 6.30 in the morning. It was snowing. It was wonderful. Loved it. Flurries, yeah. um, so, I mean, I do like this time of the year, uh, and, and I like the holidays, but... Not much on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Sorry, but it's sad. But I and you go. To, you get multiple Thanksgiving meals. Like this year, I had two. Oh, okay. Yeah, at least two every year. Sometimes three. It depends on what's going on with all the fams. You know. But I went to my mom and dad's. You know, I I, I traveled up north to the great suburbia there outside of Akron. Mm-hmm. And um, they're like, "Yay, here you go, Happy Thanksgiving!" And on the way, I was like, "Take all this shit." <laughs> here's and the food so, here's you know well no a little bit of the food is like all right here's half this cake and because i said i liked it and like here you go I'm, uh, <laughs> okay but i did really like it but no it's like here's all this stuff and it was like many time capsules of of my life mm-hmm. like a little kid i got shit to go through with boxes I, I, I brought home like six boxes of like uh toys and memorandums and stuff really right? from like when i was you know Single digits to teenagers to, you know, when I was a young adult. And I got to go through this stuff. And on one hand, I'm like, wow, this is cool. Thank you very much. But then on the other hand, I look at all this shit and I'm like, I got to throw this stuff away, don't I? What do I do with this stuff? I mean, other than take it out of the box and put it into a new storage box. (laughs) Yes. You know, but some of the stuff's pretty cool. I, you know, I had the full life, you know, the big Millennium Falcon Star Wars Mm -hmm. toy. That's been sitting in the attic. That I, if I clean up, it looked pretty nice and all that kind of stuff. And and worth money. And more, yeah, and worth money and more Star Wars stuff. And these, you know, I found they gave me. Do you have GI Joe's? D and D stuff, and you know, no GI Joe stuff. Uh, that was a big comic book. But I've got Star Wars collectors cards. I got all this 
other stuff to go through and, and miscellaneous shit. When and I moved, and this this is where I, I was like, I want to throw this away, but then, you know, I'm you know like I have this weird emotional attachment to it. Because Don't throw any of, of that like Star Wars stuff away. Attachment stuff. If you ever throw that, let I'm me not know. But okay, any okay, Star Wars stuff away, regardless. <laughs> but the other stuff that I've got in there, like turn the terrible tank game. What? For example, you never seen that? No. That's pretty cool. I remember playing that as a kid. And it's like, for example, I get stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, this is, you know, I was like, what do I do with this? When my wife and I bought our first house, yeah. uh, I'm not kidding, probably within three weeks, my parents came over every day with new boxes. Yeah. And they just walked in. Here you go. <laughs> walked out. Get it like, out of yeah. our house yeah. and into your house. <laughs> yeah, You're done. House, yeah. yeah, that's that, that's kind of the nice thing. Like, my parents retired and moved with, five six years ago so like i've already got all that stuff yeah from the house when i was a kid and i'm already gone through it so it's like i'm done with that i feel like we've gone through our storage unit price or well our storage room in our house probably four or five times since we moved in and i f- still feel like we still keep accumulating stuff it's like how progress yeah it's like, we like throw, my basement yeah, yeah exactly. we throw like totes and totes of crap well, away my next question is do you got in-law shit in your basement too no we do not i do what what, yeah. Do you have your in-laws it was in your basement? supposed to be temporarily there. Oh, no, no, until no. Until they got moved into the house and all this kind of stuff. But I still got, I got in-law shit in my house now for four fucking years. Here's what you do. You go yeah. over to their house and you no. just drop it off. I'm front porch. not allowed to bring it up. What? Even we're at family gatherings, I want to say something. I've been told. I'll take care of it. Oh, okay. I would fucking then drop that off all day long. And it's not there again. And I'm like, <laughs> son of a bitch. We're going on four years of this shit. <laughs> Every six months, I bring it up. And you're like, I'll take care of it. Don't bring it up. You get to get like Thanksgiving. You know, the one in law is, you know, making a good, you know, meal dish. And I was like, I want to bring this up. Don't bring it up. You're going to ruin everything. I'm like, why? <laughs> they moved in their house. They got room. Why is it in my basement? <laughs> I'm telling you, I would just like in the middle of the night just drop it off on their front porch. I don't know, honey, what happened to it. Just I, sell it. I would oh, like that would be good too. Just sell it. Yeah, I would like to do that. Dollar for or five bucks for the tote. Come right. pick it up. I don't know what's in it. And, and the <laughs> worst, the worst part about it is they they still know it's there. Do they ask about it? And I've brought it up on the sly once, and the the reply was, "I got stuff at your house." I'm like, I "Fucking no, you do," because you said don't throw away the Lego box. You have it. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that's good. Well, speaking of that, we uh, segue right into our poll of the week this week. That has nothing to do with in-laws. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, we had, you can follow us on Bad Ideas Podcast. Also, follow us on, uh, go to nerdly.co.uk. Uh, our episodes show up every single uh, Thursday, British time. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of good movie reviews over there, too. Um, Some you wrote. Yeah. Good night, mate. Good night, mate. Um, so, Bad Ideas Podcast Twitter poll of the week. Who is the best fictional football coach? We have Hayden Fox from Coach. Ooh. Eric Taylor from Friday Night Lights. That's correct. Jimmy McGinty from Replacements. Red means stop. Uh, and Molly McGrath from Wildcats, who's played by... Who's the actress that played Molly McGrath in Wildcats? Uh, Goldie Hawn. There you go. There you go. Um, in last place, Goldie Hawn <laughs> with 5% <laughs> of the vote. <laughs> Because she's too old for a lot of these. Things. I know, but Bolsters. I went online and I put who's the best fictional football coaches, and these were the top four. There you go. Uh, in third place, Brian. I'm sorry, Eric Taylor from Friday Night Lights. Who sorry about Eric that. Taylor, Kyle Chandler. Okay. Uh, Burt Reynolds, uh, and <laughs> winning fifty percent to twenty eight percent, Jimmy McGinty from The Replacements beat out Hayden what? Fox. Replacements has a very big cult following. Really? Uh, As yes. It should. Well, Coach was a TV show. Everything else was a movie, movie here, right? Uh, Friday Night Lights, Eric Taylor well, was a well, they TV moved, show. They made a TV show after yeah. the movie. Book, right? Book, yeah. movie, TV show. I feel like the TV show is more popular than the movie. Oh, yeah. Um, which I still have to see, but... Maybe they thought they were... Were they voting for the Eric Taylor from the movie or Eric Taylor from the TV show? Maybe they both suck. I mean, I'm just asking. They were different. Oh, okay. That wasn't the same name in the uh, movie and the TV show. Oh, was it the same team? No. Really? What? No. 
I'm so confused. Uh, it, oh, geez. Just opened up the Java chip and that's some yeah. coffee smell. Uh, we've had these before, these Oreo these Java look, chips. These look like double stuff. They do look like double stuff. They added a little bit bigger cream. Java chip flavor cream, baby. Yeah. Th- these are always good. Um, not top tw- I don't know if they're top 20 like Keenan, but we'll find out. Oh, you mean 21? Yeah, it might be 21. These are good, though. Um, so yeah, We've had these before? Yeah. All right. Then I'm probably going to like them. Uh, interesting little thing when I was trying to look at, when I was trying to do this poll, uh, fa- or I'm sorry, uh, there was going to be a reboot of Coach uh, with Craig T. Nelson. This was about six, seven years ago. Okay. And they made the pilot and they had this big announcement, CBS. They were going to bring it back. I think it was CBS or NBC, whoever had it first. I thought it was CBS. Was it CBS? Okay. They were going to bring it back. They saw the pilot and then they canceled the series. (laughs) They just stopped it. No more. That's it. They didn't even play the pilot on TV. They just canceled it. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, that's kind of sad, but maybe they saved it because it was bad. That's what I'm thinking it was. Concept because isn't a lot uh, – what's his name from Cheers? Um, shit. Woody? No. Oh, Frasier. Frasier. Yeah. Isn't that reboot getting a lot of crap Yeah. Right yeah, it's not getting good reviews. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of Frasier, the original, and mm-hmm. I don't like that character – I, it was, I mean, if it was on, I'd watch it. Because, I'm not a big fan of the TV show, of for him, sure. Because of the other characters that were in the show, mm-hmm. like his dad yeah. and his uh, brother. Yeah. Well, well, I think the problem is with the coach reboot is Jerry Van Dyke's dead yeah. at the time. And how are you rebooting it and I don't, having him in it? I want to say it was the daughter. I mean, that had had a football team. I, I'm not 100% like she, sure, but... She owned a football team. Yeah, or, or something like the, that. Yeah. I mean, that... From watching the show, that would make sense, but I like you, you can't. That's not really a reboot. No, if you're bringing him back, no, as coach. I guess it would be whatever. a sequel, maybe. Yeah, that just. But yeah, it was. They saw the pilot and said, "We're done." Yeah, like what? Thirty years later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and who's coming back to watch Coach? Like from the 1990s. My dad really my loved parents, it. Yeah, my, my dad loved it. Yeah. But I remember it's like, watching it like when it was on yes. TV with my dad. I did the same thing. But it's like, are you going to get a crowd up? You know, people are going to watch. It's like bringing wings back. Are you bringing wings back now? Next. Yeah. Um, so oh, no, that's weird. Uh, Bri- or Blake, your name's Blake. Um, <laughs> let's do some listener feedback. What do you got over there? I'm protesting the first comment. I'm sorry. The I apologize. First question. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, hit a sound effect button. Random. Test. Test. Nope, oh, that's Sweet Caroline music. Uh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Hit the other blue button. <laughs> Cash register. Because your money. You know whose fingers aren't too fat for that board? My fingers. Yours. Yeah, I'm doing fine with it. Right. Mm, sad trombone. I don't know. Jeff, Jeff still has a monopoly on it, I think. Jeff just puts his hand down on it. <laughs> just go, blah. <laughs> I mean, let's not go too far. He's not Doug. <laughs> okay, that's true. Beaver hands. <laughs> yeah. That's the first question. Beaver hands. What? Ape hands. Can't give yourself a nickname. Yeah. Jelly Billy. Sunny D. Mailman. He yeah. always comes thrice. That's right. Not once, not thrice. twice. Thrice. Thrice. That's right. Big D. Yes. Um, oh, listener feedback sponsored this week by Dolly fucking Parton. She's still rocking it. Rocking it, baby. 78. Rocking yeah. the Dallas cheerleaders out, and yeah. the best is Brian. Well, I know they, you're going they, to be upset by they this. They did have some, f- you know, flesh colored mesh. So what? You know, for this stuff. But you know, I, I'm not complaining. She was, she was still, she's America's sweetheart, sweetheart. Brian, I know you're going to be shocked. Uh, People online were complaining. Oh, the internet. Yes, they were the up internet. In arms. What? Why? She should dress her age. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> So she was in a Giles Cowboys cheerleader outfit. How dare she? She was showing skin. She's in great well, shape. Technically. Flash. You know, from the from the top up. Yes. yes. The midsection and everything else. She had flesh yeah. stockings, stockings, stockings and yeah. Stuff on, but so. so what? Like But still still uh perform, kick some ass, yeah. look good. I mean, if you're that age and you still look good, 
you know, either, you know, whether you're enhanced <laughs> no. or you've had some work done no. to keep you looking that age, you know, still, you know, why, why complain? I mean, I mean, if you can still wear something and rock it at that age, why, why are you criticizing them for it? She definitely worked past nine to five. Yeah. That day. I mean, on her body. She's so. worked more than nine to five. Yes. Good for her. Good for her. But people were complaining. I was shocked. Because weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that's why I don't do more social media than I do. <laughs> From Big D, speaking of social media, hmm. is the store, the Cat's Meow with a K, a store for couples in Gatlinburg, a competitor to Kitty City. Kitty City is Brian's. No comment. Kitty City is Brian's. Um, Store for cats? We're not sure. Out of store. Nope. Uh, daycare. And uh, wow. there is a nice little uh, adult shop in Catlinburg called the Cats Meow. I think it is direct competition. It is not. Uh, they have a lot of cats there. Lots of cats. So They do not. So both stores are centered around a lot of pussy? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, hit the button. There you go. <laughs> Got the room shot there. Let's take a drink. Otherwise, I could... here, let me do it again. There you go. Well, I, I don't know if that was a snare drum symbol. I think the want Sad, wah. There you go. Sad yeah, drum. The want would have been more appropriate. Have to admit, this is a lot of fun <laughs> over here. It's a lot of responsibility. It is. Uh, I always keep looking down just making sure I'm recording this thing. <laughs> like, if we go through this whole thing and we don't record it, there's going to be issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are. Okay. 41 minutes in. <laughs> so the well, answer is no? No. Okay. It is not. I don't believe it. Believe it. Because when you're talking about Kitty City and it was Brian's location, I thought, was that what that is? Hangout, his nope. bachelor nope. party location? Nope. Hangout? Nope. You know, what if you were a bachelor party and showed up to Kitty City? What do you <laughs> What's here for the cats? Which one? <laughs> I mean, would they throw you? That's out? a good business decision. Nope. A bachelor party, yeah. Brian, nope. and they can just yeah. come in and play with kittens. Nope. I got you so much pussy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I nope. pet so much pussy. We're not Brian's a pet, bachelor party. We're not a pet store. <laughs> nope. We're not a pet store. It's a petting store. <laughs> nope. I had so much pussy on my lap. <laughs> I mean, look, honey, look at all the pictures I got. <laughs> you tell your fiance, we're going to Kitty City, baby. And there's a lot of pussy. Uh, I need I need dollars I, so I can buy the uh, <laughs> cat food so I can give it to them, the cat treats. <laughs> Brian, I think this is a beautiful business who's adventure. Throwing, who's throwing money in for Meow Mix, guys? <laughs> Come on. We're not bringing out those cats until we got enough Meow Mix. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, who's got the catnip? <laughs> Don't you think this is a great idea? Right? We're trying to help you. No, I mean, no thank you. Okay. You know what's going to happen a year from now? He's going to open this up and be like, oh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I never heard you guys say this. No. We're going to sue. It's going to get ugly. We're going to have to ask for, you know, you know some money, money from it. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to get ugly. Why did Hobie break up? We, have, uh, <laughs> we had an argument over Kitty City. <laughs> Sorry. Oof. Moving on. What else you got? Uh, so there you go, Doug. It is not. <laughs> if anybody has great questions about Kitty City, no. please send them to us at Bad no. Ideas Podcast. Don't. don't. Please, please don't. don't. Please. Please don't. Please do. Don't. I bet Meow God will. <laughs> oh. That's a good one. Uh huh. <laughs> from little richard 205 at not that richard hmm. vino white has worn over eight thousand gowns while working on the wheel of fortune what is a favorite shirt or outfit you have worn a lot brian uh actually probably i've had this sweatshirt probably the longest Rocky Balboa. Yeah, the Balboa Boxing Club. Okay. It's the first time I've seen it. Yeah. Very comfortable. I'm kidding. Just <laughs> first time I saw it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, no I word here just for tonight. Like, he saw Little Richard's. Yeah. I, I got the email from Jason yesterday. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm going to wear my favorite shirt. Uh, no, I, I don't, pretty much any hoodie is yeah, for me. Like, I I don't really yeah. have a, like, favorite outfit. 
Yeah. Um, I just don't really care that much about clothes in general. I wear a lot of hoodies. My hoodies, yeah. um, we were Arizona Cardinals. Down. This one. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of good ones. Um, those are pretty much the most things I'm comfortable with. Yeah. Um, they're, I mean, T-shirts are fine, but mm-hmm. yeah. Usually I get, you know, uh, my new Sock Monkey jersey. Oh, yep, for softball. I'll wear it and sleep in it for like a couple weeks until my wife tells me to wash it because it stinks. Oh, you didn't clean it? No. Or, you know, the West Side Softball Champions t-shirt. That is true. When I get those, I usually wear those for several weeks straight, never take it off. I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. Uh, Because we won three times. That's right. We are... Retired champions. Retired Final three-time champion. Champions, that's yep. right. Playoff champion. Because they closed the softball Tournament complex champions. this year. We went out on Closing top. Closing a softball fields for fucking storage. Yeah, was, our softball field fucking has become a storage unit. So fuck me. the best part is it floods every year. So that yeah, should be fun for the storage unit. Are they going to build that shit on stilts or what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Will they have lights? <laughs> Been asking that for years. Yeah. Uh, well, we're, we're in a predicament because we've got to find a new place to play. My backyard. Let me get it going. Uh, what else we got? From former intern Brian. Oh, Brian, here you go. What? 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 You had this question a while back. Oh, okay. Actor Zachary Quinto is in a new NBC series called Doctor Wolf. How does this fit into Dick Wolf Wednesdays? You did ask this because there's a new show coming out. Who, um, who asked this? You did. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. I'm not kidding you. You put it on our chat. No. I think you did. I will, um, I will prove myself right you that I did this. not. You wrote this. No, I did Anyways, didn't. Dr. Wolf, I have no idea what it's called or what it's about. Uh, we can fit it in at 1030 to 11 on um, yeah. uh, Dick Wolf Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I think we could probably do that. In order to appeal to the uh, other gender for mm-hmm. bachelorette parties, isn't that going to be your next spot too? Dick Wolf Wednesdays? Oh, you can play with wolves. <laughs> There'd be a lot of dick there. At Wolf Den. <laughs> the, den. the Den. There you go. <laughs> Buy, build another place, Brian. The Den. Yeah. I'm not doing that. You can play with right, wolf puppies. Put it right uh, next to it. I never yeah, asked so this you question. Get the bachelor and bachelor I'm finding parties. It. I'm looking in our chat right now. I'm finding it. Oh, you asked this question. No, I, I did not. Maybe it was on Twitter. I did not ask this question. I don't even know what this show is. I don't know, but you said it. No, I didn't. I think you're bullshit. I think you're bullshit. I'm going to find this out. I'm, I'm digging this Dick Wolves theme, too, because the Bachelors <laughs> can get, like, you know, furry ears. You know how they get, like, yeah. wolf ears and, like, Like furry, a Great Wolf Lodge. Yeah, like wolf tails. <laughs> yeah. Instead of wearing, like, you know, you know dicks on their head, they uh-huh. can get, like, you know, furry tails and... and uh, at Kitty Furry City, ears. they could wear t-shirts. I pet pussy yeah. for my bachelor party. <laughs> yeah. See? This is amazing, Brian. You just bought... Uh, we just got you a bachelor uh, crowd and a bachelorette crowd. Yeah. Didn't ask for that. You're well... You know, but you got it. You're welcome. I I don't. I'm, the money's nope. going to start rolling in. Oh, easy. Nope. Easy. Easy. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. So People are going to listen to this and start throwing in the Hobie coin. I would love for them to call you and go, hey, Brian, nope. do you have bachelor parties at your place? <laughs> nope. Um, well, you got it here, Blake. I didn't ask that question. <laughs> you did. I'm going to find it. Please do. Stay, I, stay tuned to the end where we'll give out his place of employment phone number and everybody start calling. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just look up the Cat's Meow in Gatlinburg. That's where Brian works. <laughs> All right. From Pyramid Club 398 at Permord Club. If you had the money to run a commercial... For your podcast during the Super Bowl, what would the commercial be? Oh, it's got to be a Hello Jeff spot, right? Yeah, but you got to promote our podcast too. Mm-hmm. You, you know, know when I'm when I'm hungry, uh, do, you know, making a podcast is difficult and makes me hungry after a long day of podcasting. That's it. That's it. That's a good. You know, one. you're gonna have to dig out. We've already got a commercial to run. What's that? We got it from the real stars of Three Six Five Flicks. Did we? Yeah, not those two dolts, you know, that ran three six yeah. five flicks. I'm talking about Rose and her sister. Oh, they did the make real a commercial stars for of us. Three six five. They did our first audio commercial for Hobie. They did. Now we they can do like one of those like originals, you know, where they do like you know the old uh, pictures and videos, of like when they're little girls 
reading the scripts that we had for them. And then they can like morph into modern day rereading it and reenacting it. I like that. Like it's just an old good, feel good, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, right after that. The Super Bowl. Right That's after. Right. So you have ours, and then it goes right into the Kitty City commercial. Yeah. Hey, you need a place for bachelors this weekend? That's Come right. down to Kitty City. Play with some cats. Right. Bring your dollar bills, boys, for your cat for the yeah. meow mix. <laughs> you need some catnip. You know, I, st- I still have that commercial. You got it. We put it tacking on at the end of the episode. I got to find it. Mm-hmm. I got to find it. Okay. What else you got? That's your commercial. I love that we're not answering any of these questions. That's the an answer. That's what he just did. We already got one. What do you got, Brian? What's their commercial? You already had one with the Hello Jeff and after a long day of podcasting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. You could see us all podcasting coming out of the studio sweating like, oh my gosh, that was a rough one. That was a long day of podcasting. And then, hey, you hungry? Have some Hello Jeff. And it would be like Chris Pratt, or it could be all famous Jeffs that show up. Or we can get like Jeff some Goldblum. Kind of pharmaceutical sponsorship for our type 2 diabetes that we're going to get from you. Correct. Shit. Correct. Oreo could help out. So I like having all the famous Jeffs Jeff Goldblum, yeah. Jeff Bridges, mm-hmm. Jeff Bagwell, <laughs> <laughs> uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> Uh, Jeff Saturday. Jeff Saturday. <laughs> hey, you might remember me as a coach. No, <laughs> not really. Uh, Jeff Francis. Jeffrey Epstein. Oh. Oh. I'm yeah. not really dead. You guys boo me. <laughs> I haven't said shit to you all night. <laughs> but boo me. <laughs> Where's the boo button in that thing? I don't have it. Damn it. This is more difficult. That's an air horn. There you go. Got the applause. You may think I died in a jail cell. I didn't. Ooh. Or <clears throat> Jeff. Meow, man. Oh, not meow. Nick Albright. Ooh. After a long day. Stop on by Kitty City. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brian, you, you can go back now, Brian. You can go back. Brian, you can put your head size back on and join the podcast again. No, Come thank on, you. Man. <laughs> All right, what All else right. we got? Steve at EILFM. Hey, Steve. Hey, Izzy. Did you know that hmm? you can still get 15% off by using the promo code HOBIEPOD? You know what's amazing is that every week that is at the very top mm-hmm. of our outline mm-hmm. and it never gets talked about. Does today? We just talked about it. Fifteen percent Hobie Pod. Go to Etsy, uh, Untidy Venus, or just text her, message her on uh, Twitter, Untidy Venus. Great or just stuff. Send her money. You just send her money. Say this is from uh, in honor of Hobie. We need to get them back on. We do need to get them back on. Been a minute. <laughs> just send her money, but take fifteen percent off. Uh, they. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to send you twenty bucks. <laughs> I'm giving. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking the fifteen. <laughs> Uh, they will be doing a category uh, nominee for uh, Floppy Awards. It's so coming, that's coming up. We got some Floppy Awards going out. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast. We got a lot of polls coming up. Um, the the outline is getting done for the award ceremony. No bribes this week. No bribe. Yeah, we're kind of low on bribes. Well, hold on. The Java Chip Oreos are from that's, Sister Pam. That's part of a large bribe that yeah. we've just dr- we've been but it's, dragging it's the bribe out. Bribe that just keeps on giving. It is. It is. Sister Pam is up there Still for a nominee for Canadian eat. of the Year. That's right. Still so more to eat from Pam. Yes. Uh, what else got? Professor number one and Doctor number one. Concert goers were stunned after the American psychedelic rock band, the Brian Jonestown Massacre. <laughs> oh, if you're going to that concert, can kind of figure. Expecting? Yeah. We're performing at the Forum and started punching each other midway through the concert. <laughs> Do you feel that this is how Hobie will end? But there's no Kool-Aid drinking. No, there is not. No one died. Okay. <laughs> Passed out on stage. Well, they don't live up to their name then, do they? No, they do not. Well, if you've listened this far, you know that this is how this is going to end. <laughs> uh, One too far Kitty City joke. Brian's going to start wailing on somebody. Oh, we start making all that money from Kitty City. And then Hobie he'll come back. At, then we'll do a, re, a new podcast, yeah. the new Hobie Adventures, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, welcome back. It's to the new Hobie Adventures, and we'll have to do another thousand of them. 
We'll have like the Kitty City Twitter poll of the week. Oh, yeah. For example. Bachelor party. Uh, okay. So moving on. I got to find this music. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, we got News of the Geek. It's time for another edition of News of the Geek. News of the Geek. Yeah, I'm Jeff. You know that what that button is. Terrible. My fingers are too fat. That was terrible. Fat fingers. They're like sausages. All right, let's hear your impression. I would never try to impersonate Jeff. I'm Jeff. <laughs> that was like a Richard Nixon. <laughs> I'm Jeff. I'm not a crook. I'm Jeff. <laughs> I'm not the sound man here. <laughs> you can't get anything on me. Well, so you say my fingers are too fat for this. <laughs> I like that when we do Nixon, we both have to shake our hand. But, <laughs> we both have to shake our hands. As and, uh, I don't know what happened to those 50 minutes on the tapes. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's do it. We miss you, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I think Brian misses Jeff the most. <laughs> he evens this out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why do you come here every week? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> At least gas is cheaper. You know why? Because Shark Tank ideas that we give you every week. Shark Tank ideas. Uh, Mark Cuban's leaving Shark Tank. Did you <clears> see that? <throat> 16 seasons. Yeah, he said that. This is the third time he said that. So we'll see if it happens. Just saying. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he did say that he has lost more money on some of the things. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, you know, I still I, I still have a lot of companies. <laughs> I mean, none of that's helped him with his uh, Dallas Mavericks. I guess not. <laughs> but I'm just like. I've been on Shark Tank for 16 years. And I'm still looking for that idea that will help my basketball team win. I, 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 I'm looking for that idea to get me out of middle class. <laughs> so, of the NBA. Yes. <laughs> he won his championships. Yeah. Uh, per the New York Post, where Brian gets all of his news from. I do. This is my favorite story of the week. A wife has threatened to protest. Threatened to protest outside the brothel in the Gold Coast. Where's the Gold Coast at? Africa. Oh, okay. Thank you. After her husband spent nearly four thousand dollars U.S. U.S. dollars on a seven-hour sex bender, the man attended the Pentagon Grand, where he had intercourse with two sex workers and paid for service upgrades, including fetishes and fantasies. Manager of the brothel in Mullen Darner. Melindinar. Yeah, Melindinar. Uh, Suzanne Pfeiffer told the Gold Coast yeah. Bulletin uh, the man paid for the first hour with cash because he did not want his wife to know. <laughs> he had a great plan to start with. And then, uh, let's see here. Uh, he wanted to continue. When he wanted to continue the X-rated bunk bonanza. Bonanza? Bonanza? The, the Z is at the end. Bonanza. The Bonanza. The Bonanza. It's, it's a Hobie Bonanza. Uh, he tried to do so using a bank transfer, but eventually ended up using a credit card when the bank transfer said pending. After seven hours, the sex workers said they were too tired to continue. <laughs> seven hours. We're done. Is that straight? With no breaks? <laughs> And the man left. His irate wife later turned up at the brothel with her husband in tow, claiming he had been, quote, drunk and on drugs and had no recollection of the incident. (laughs) Still doesn't matter, honey. (laughs) Doesn't matter. You know, my bachelor party, I passed out at noon during the day. Yes. And that's an honest to God truth. Really? Yes. I, you know, they started buying, we were in a pool with a bar. It was a crazy weekend. Shots. Mm -hmm. I literally passed out at noon. Uh, and I didn't wake up until like one or two o'clock in the morning. Did you have and cats licking? To your this leg? day, no. No. Oh. To this day, uh-huh. my wife thinks I'm lying. <laughs> because and you're saying it on Hobie because she true. says, "Well, that's well, uh, yeah, that's the ultimate lying, cover up truth." I'm like, no, it's it's real. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say, honey. I got nothing to say. I don't remember it because did I she ask why out. you had a four thousand dollar charge from? Uh, the Pentagon? No, but I think my buddies may have. <laughs> uh, Pfeiffer politely explained that the man seemed sober in CCC, CCC uh, TV footage and had successfully negotiated a good deal with the workers. <laughs> Something that would have been hard to do if he was drunk or on drugs. Uh, the woman uh, refused to accept her explanations and threatened to protest outside the venue. I would love to see that. Threaten to protest. Quote, we've been told her she's welcome to peacefully protest on public property. 
but if we have any concerns for safety, we would have to call the police, said Pfeiffer. My concern is that male clients walk in would not appreciate this, <laughs> and verbal altercations can quickly escalate. We advise her to call the police if she believes her husband has been ripped off because she won't listen to us. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the manager said the man had spent quite a lot of money, and the most people get is usually a half-hour standard service with no extras. Yeah. Yeah. She added the dispute was between the husband and wife was nothing to do with the brothel, which had provided good service. All right. We provide good service here. Quote, this is not our problem. We are a legal business, and this was a legitimate service with a legitimate charge. He knew what he was doing. He just got caught. If a woman is mad about the $4,000, take it up with the husband, not us. Uh, let's see here. This is the best. The manager further stated, it's not fair that we're the only ones getting harassed. Go bother him about it. It's like blaming the casino for your husband gambling. We don't control his actions. We just I, take his money. I just like her saying, like, don't blame us. <laughs> so I like that one. Um, yeah, great. Great job. <laughs> And That's you, a good one. Seven hours. <laughs> Could you imagine? I picture the hu- wife dragging the husband back, <laughs> and he's just like head be- head down, sl- shoulder slumped. I was drunk and on drugs, honey. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. They took advantage of me. Uh, I mean, that's me negotiating on the tape, but that that I wasn't saying anything. That wasn't me. Uh, per page six, which is a reliable source. Uh, Susan Sarandon's son, Miles Robbins, is happy people are backing his mom after she was let go by her agent following a controversial speech about the Israel Hamas. I never say it right. Hamas. Bazanza. There you go. War. (laughs) He just wishes people would stop using a video of her with her breast out to show their support. (laughs) This is the best part. Don't tell people on Twitter or X or social media not to do something or please stop doing something there because you go. guess what's going to happen quote okay i'm really grateful to see people on twitter defending my mom and miss a new era of mccarthyism blacklisting but can you please stop using the clip of her getting her hair done with her honkers out <laughs> robin pleaded on 30 on x on wednesday the clip that fans have been sharing shows the oscar winning actress 77 she's 77 yeah same age as dolly parton jeezel having her hair blown out while she's wearing nothing but a barely their robe and sheer bra. Naturally, there was a slew of cheeky responses to his tweet. Uh, some examples include, those honkers fed you, some, fed, fed you, have some respect. Uh, now you're doing the blacklisting. Uh, and uh, Robbins liked a majority of the playful responses, but when someone wrote, you can't censor us or her big naturals by guy, it appeared he had enough. And he wrote, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. I can't. Have you, have you seen the clip? Yes. It, you have to look at it, yes. of course. Now, here's here's something. I I never realized that she was that bosomy. I didn't either. Because I, I, cause I've seen her work. Yeah. You know, Thelma Louise. Uh, pfft. Uh, was it Rocky, Rocky Horror Picture White Palace? Show? Was she, she was Rocky Horror. Yeah, she, she was in Rocky, uh, White Palace. She Bull was Durham. in Bull Durham. None of those movies do I remember her bosom. She was in Blue Beetle. I didn't see that yet. <laughs> I did see that. It was a good but, uh, family film. Not at all. And that's not what I think of when I see yeah. Susan Sarandon. But that clip was very yes. gratuitous. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So it goes on to say something about you know her talking about the Israel thing and all that. but And she got dropped by her agent. But moving on. So there you go. Uh, so please send him some more. Um, let's see here. That's all I got. Uh, Brian, did you want to do uh, box office news and world reports over there? Sure. Okay, let me get this for you. It's time for box office bombs. I'm eating a cookie. Oh, sorry. Per 411mania.com, where Jason gets all of his news. I do get a lot there. The Marvels film was down 37% to 6.4 million on the three day and 8.8 million through Wednesday. That puts the movie at 76.9 million in the U.S., 187.1 million worldwide. International numbers are trying hard, but they can't lift this $220 million production to profit. It should be able to end its run at about 100 million domestically. That's unbelievable. It's under 100 million. How do how do international numbers try hard, and how can I get some of that to work for me? <laughs> They're just going to keep releasing every country known to man. Hey, Ghana, you want the Marvels? We're trying hard. Uh, we've never had a, a Marvel released in the theaters. You do now. <laughs> hey, Switzerland. Hey, hey, get some Susan Sarandon uh, tatas in there. <laughs> Maybe it'll boost the just numbers. Just go in there, Susan. 
Uh, it, it's, it's a good film. I enjoyed the film. Or what's playing in the Gold Coast? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a sex worker for seven hours. They're going to need a break for at least to watch a movie. Get those international numbers up. Day off the next day? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Girls, just go home. Go home. <laughs> go home. That guy was weird. Yeah, he was. Go home. You're, you've earned it. So, yeah. Uh, this right. is the first year. I forget in like how many years they said 20 years, 30 years that Disney will not have a billion dollar film. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Very. So uh, what else you got? All right. Uh, coming in number one. This Would it week. be depressive? Not impressive. <laughs> I guess it is depressive. If you're a stockholder. I don't oh, know. I'm sorry. I'm going to find that out. No, you're good. Uh, coming in number one this week, The Hunger Games, The Bout of Songbirds and Snakes made $29 million. For a total of ninety eight point five million on a budget of a hundred million, we're getting more. Is there a prequel book? Yes, that this is off of. Yes. Is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. I've never seen any Hunger Games. I've seen like thirty minutes of the first one. That's it. And I'm not against it. I just never had sat down and watched it. I big fan of. I read the books, mm-hmm. then seen the movies, and you yeah, like the movies? I'm, yeah, they were okay. very good. Yeah, I, I never read the books, but I had uh, my wife and one daughter tell me all about them for several hours on a road trip. <laughs> so I didn't need to read them. I found it. Thanks for the cliff notes. <laughs> yeah, this, that's what it was, essentially. But I, I didn't know there was this. Yeah, this so you, a, had a, you had a book on tape just with yeah, your family pretty much. going in. Yeah. Have you seen this one? Not yet. Okay. Um, it's Erica c- just finished reading the book. Um, I didn't read it, but I'll see it, and then I'll, I'll eventually read the book. But uh, it's getting decent reviews, yeah. As opposed to this film that is not getting good historical reviews. Oh, uh, man. coming in <laughs> second this week was Napoleon, made twenty point five million in its opening weekend, total of thirty two point five million on a budget of two hundred million. Historians man, do not like this one. I, that's what I wrote. Historians are just pissed off. <laughs> they are. I've read. I can't tell you. I've read like. Um, Two articles from two historians. You know, one one was a uh, lifelong Napoleon biographer mm-hmm. who's you know his head is up his ass with Napoleon facts, and he <laughs> just went through about how the movie is just horrible and fa- un- unfactual, and a lot of this shit is misrepresentative or didn't happen, and blah blah blah. And then I just think of Ridley Scott's comment. It's you know. It's a it's a movie. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> Ridley Scott's like, like eighty five years old. I mean, he doesn't fucking care. You're, it's it's you can make a movie about a historical figure that's not accurate or it's that's not a it's not a history biopic. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's an it's entertainment a, purposes it's, movie. It's Abraham a, Lincoln sake. Vampire Hunter is not a biographical. Yeah, yeah, it is. That was real. Oh, okay, good. Okay. He was America's best vampire you know, hunter. Vampire hunter. Okay, okay. these aren't documentaries. <laughs> these are. Movies, yeah, these are it's just entertainment, and it's amazing. Purposes. Just, Could you they, imagine they're, sitting next to this so historian insane. in the movie theater? That's not right. You know, you just see like in the middle. You know, uh, uh, when I was writing my book about this guy, that didn't happen. <laughs> Somebody was like, "Sir, could you <laughs> shut up?" I'm trying to go, film. Bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. Or I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant merd, merd. Is that French? Yeah, mm, merd. merd. Mad. This is bullshit. I don't Mad. understand why they're doing this. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Sir, I'm just trying to watch a film. It's a, but it's a bad film. A gladiator is <laughs> <laughs> it's not historical fact either. Passion of the Christ may not be. Uh, uh Titanic? Ah, yeah, that was, uh, the, there, well, hold on. That. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that was all real. Yeah, that was real. Billy Zane was really on the ship. Yeah. And he's a time the relationship, traveler. of course. He is a, he's a time traveler. Um, Yeah. Uh, I'm shocked, but yeah, I, I just keep I, seeing I just, things. I just can't believe it's in, you know, it's a movie. Get over it. There, I, it, there it is Ridley anger. Says. Like there is yeah. anger out there in the historical community, and we're a history there podcast, is. Yeah. and we're not even that upset. <laughs> they didn't even show him at the water park. Where is that at? Yeah, they didn't even show him in, uh, you know, bowling. No, you know, <laughs> seeing Demas. <laughs> What else you got here? Brian? Uh, coming in number three this week, <laughs> Wish made nineteen point five million in its opening weekend for a total of thirty two million on a budget of two hundred million. So the Disney film it did not do well. Did not do well. Nope. There's another Disney film out called Wish. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's uh, probably why it did, that's not doing a lot. They, they they their wish did not come true. What's From, it about? Uh, somebody wishes something. How? Oh. Isn't yeah. that what the G- G- you know, Aladdin's she, about? Isn't uh, that what Aladdin's about? Yeah. Genie and the Lamp? This is, she wish, uh, the king of the 
town. Yeah. He controls the wishes, and once a year, he lets one person get a wish. And then she wish this lady, this girl wishes upon a star, and everybody's wishes come true. Yes. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, coming in fourth this week, Trolls Band Together <sighs> made seventeen point five million total of sixty four point five million on a budget of ninety five million. This fucking film. It wasn't horrible, but my God, please stop this franchise, please, for the love of God. Justin Timberlake, you do not need the money. Baby, oh. he does. What kind of trolls were they? They're not D and D trolls, right? No, no, no. They have long hair. Oh, like on top of their head. Oh, like on the top of my pencil. Yes, those type of trolls. Uh, they don't have uh, pencils up their asses, though. So that's <laughs> well, maybe if they did, they'd make more they money. They do have the Pentagon Palace or in the Gold Coast, <laughs> but that's another thing. <laughs> Uh, well, All right, and rounding out the top five this week, Thanksgiving made seven point two million total of twenty four million on a budget of fifteen million. I want to see this. This is, I, I want to see this. the Eli Roth. I mean, other than Thanksgiving, it's a horror film slasher. Somebody dresses. Oh, this is where the. Oh, I thought this is where the turkey kills everybody. No, that's the sequel. Oh, uh, this is uh, that's called the Gobble. Uh, the, no, the Thanksgiving pill. Uh, somebody dresses as a pilgrim, kills around, killing people. I really want to see. Oh it. yeah, I, I think I saw it. something about that. It looks great. So, what's upcoming December first, Brian? Uh, upcoming, we've got Renaissance. Bullshit. A it's film, not accurate. It's a film by <laughs> Beyonce. Oh, oh we know it's not true. <laughs> 87 writers wrote it. <laughs> 87 writers. Beyonce in performance at her record-breaking Renaissance World Tour and the creative mastermind behind it, just following the Taylor Swift model. <laughs> it's going to make a gazillion dollars. God, Not as stop much as it, Taylor people. Swift. No. Uh, uh, also, yeah, what have, football player is she going to date to get publicity? Isn't she married? To Jay-Z. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. She doesn't. <laughs> Fuck Travis Kelsey. What team does he play? What team does he play on? She's she's gonna marry Travis Tritt. (laughs) Hit the bad joke button, please. There There you go. go. Thank you. (laughs) All right. What else? Godzilla minus one. This looks great. (laughs) Post-war Japan is at its lowest point when a new crisis emerges in the form of a giant monster baptized in the horrific power of the atomic bomb. There's actually a priest that has the atomic bomb just baptizing him, (laughs) just sprinkling it. Now, this is the Japanese one. Um, It's being released over here. It's getting great reviews, um, which is funny, though, because it's going to be like, you know, you think you're confused by the DC universe. Now we got two separate Godzilla universes. So get ready. Uh, but yeah, it's getting good reviews, so I'm hoping that it does well. Uh, also, this week coming out, we have our good friend uh, Neil McDonough's new film, uh, The Shift. The Shift, buddy. Oh, I don't want those. Put those over there. Oh, uh, I ate half this pack. Here, put them over there. Please. The Shift. Uh, yeah. Do you have the description there, Brian? Yeah. After meeting a mysterious stranger, a man must a man must escape a dystopian world to return to his wife. Neil McDonough plays the devil. Yeah. Uh, from Angel Films. You know what? Love Neil McDonough. Um, uh, supposedly, this is his uh, his comeback. Let's yes. Start, this will start his comeback. Yep. Uh, he's very proud of it. Yeah. And um, I'm really excited. I like Neil McDonough. Yeah. So go they see him. I had another Bane and Brothers uh, uh, a thon during Thanksgiving here. Really? Yeah. And I saw Neil yeah. in it. Oh, I thought you came to your house for I Thanksgiving. Just, I, had, I had free time. Yeah, I saw it. I had to start watching it because it's a good series. Sean Astin's also in that. Yeah. Neil McDonough, one of the nicest guys we interviewed. Yeah. So, just a nice guy all around. Uh, what else you got? Uh, lastly, we have Silent Night. John Woo. Um, oh. John Woo. A grieving father enacts his long-awaited revenge against a ruthless gang on Christmas Eve. This is uh, John Wick on Santa. Joel Kinnaman. Oh, is the is the star of this? <laughs> Catch a falling star there. What happened to you, Joel? <laughs> um. Hey, I did RoboCop. Suicide Squad. Uh, yeah, that's about wrapped, it. Wrapping up for him. He was supposed to be the big thing after the TV series The Killing. Did not happen. He chose RoboCop, and that shows poorly. Um, I think he's great in the Suicide Squad movies, though. I don't think he's a bad actor. It's just he was very, like, destined to be a big star, and then they just never got... It's like which Scott one, Speedman. Which one was he? Joel Kinnaman? Yeah. He's, the, uh, he's the leader. Flag. Yeah, Rick Flagg. Oh, okay. Did he die in the last one? I don't remember. Maybe, maybe not. We'll yeah. have to wait for the next one. That's true. 
Um, it looks like he did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah. Uh, I have heard nothing about Silent Night, and supposedly it has very little dialogue in it. It is John Woo. <laughs> it is silent. It's a silent film. It's Literally. like the artist, but with action. That's right. That's right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I did see, was watching something with John Cena the other day, and they asked him what his if he's ever tried to take stuff from a set. And uh, he said the only thing he's ever tried to take was stuff from the Peacemaker set. And they they said, you're not taking that. <laughs> and, like, I guess there was a phone that he really liked and, like, some wardrobe in there. They basically stopped him, like, sorry, you can't take that. He's like, they don't like taking stuff off superhero sets. <laughs> like, anything else is fine. But you try taking stuff off a superhero set, it's not happening. I figured he would want Eagly. Oh, Eagly. Uh, I got to get the Funko Pop of him. I believe I have that. I think you do. I think I do. I think you do. Uh, I yeah. did. P- I did pick up some Funko Pops to give away for trivia at the Cincinnati Comic Expo, October 18th through the 20th. I was wrong on those dates. Yeah, eight, uh, October 18th through the 20th. Get your tickets now. Well, no, next month, two months. Uh, it's in Sharonville. And yeah. Queen City Pop is coming. Big news. A one-day-only event, April 27th. I uh, hope you will be there. Come get your tickets. Uh, they'll be announcing those tickets soon. It's a one-day only event at the Cincinnati Convention Center. So it's at Duke, right? Duke, it's the yep. last the last event before Duke closes for two years for renovations. Yep. Uh, they will be uh, having, I think, some celebrities there. They haven't announced it yet, and uh, lots of vendors and pretty much anything you like, they like. So any it's pop a, culture it's a, stuff, a mini comic expo. Yes. Uh, a lot more pop culture stuff. Um, so, yeah, just keep following. So, just want to like. They right just now. dropped that two days ago, yep. yesterday. Yep. Yeah that's, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so, there you go. Um, we got top five, I think. Hold on. Do we have top five music, Jason? There you go. Top five this week. Uh, top five worst weather-related films. It's a very loose interpretation, too. Uh, so uh, anything that could be weather-related. Uh, Blake, what do you got over there? Uh, number five. I yes. got uh, San Andreas. Okay. The Rock. The oh, only, that the is only, bad. The only redeeming factor of this was... Number five was that it had Alexandria Daddario in it. You know they're making a sequel to that. They are. How? I don't know how, but they are. I just remember watching the helicopter stunt. Yeah, and I'm like, this is such bullshit. I can't stand it. I think it looks like it could have happened, but <laughs> it's a movie. So oh, I'm supposed to suspend belief. Dis- Correct. That is that is the. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my number five. Nine twenty nine. That's right. Uh, the Weatherman uh, with Nicolas Cage. I actually put that photo up there <laughs> on Facebook. Horrible film. Horrible film. Uh, we had to watch that in theaters. Uh, I think Jeff watched it with me, or I had to watch it with Jeff. Oh, sorry, Nicolas Cage. It was bad. Uh, number five for you? Uh, number five for me, I'm going to go with The Santa Suit. Okay. What uh, is that? That is uh, Kevin Sorbo Christmas movie. <laughs> Why is it a? Because uh, it snows. It's snow- <laughs> and it's a, a Kevin blizzard. Sorbo Christmas movie. Okay. I think you're taking it very seriously. What's your number four? Uh, my number four will be. Hmm. Um. Faith under fire. That is a uh, a Dean Kane Kevin <laughs> Sorbo film. <laughs> um, What's it about? A fireman in a fire. It's really good. <laughs> good <Yep>. job, Brian. <laughs> What's the weather? Well, the wind pushes, pushes the fire. The fire. Yep. Okay. So okay. it's like a wild a theme. fire. Sense a theme. Uh, my number four is a horrible film, Day After Tomorrow. Uh, hey, we got wolves in this movie. We got animals in the zoo. They're all CGI. What the fuck? <laughs> just, put the CGI, just put the animals there. Uh, a horrible film. 
Uh, Dennis Quaid. No, no real animals equals uh, no pay to complain. That is true. That is true. But it was a horrible film. Um, not good. Uh, Andrew Garfield, I think. Uh, Andrew Garfield? I think it was. He was in it. Uh, not good. Uh, number four? You're thinking of Tom Holland. No, 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 no. I'm thinking of Tobey Maguire. <laughs> uh, number four for you, Blake? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a number four. What's your number three? I don't have one of those either. Because I, I had to keep it to movies I've seen. Oh, there's so many. But I, I'm not, not really now. into weather movies. Got number three here. Not the good one. The bad one. The Avengers with Uma Thurman and Ralph uh, Fiennes. Uh, come on, show and tell us how to say it. Oh, it's about the old Avengers in the 60s. Uh, it had a weather machine and it was the bad guy. He had a weather machine. And it was the most boring, awful show yeah. in a long time. Talk about something that could have had a lot of good potential. Yes. I mean, it was yes. no nude bomb. No, no. <laughs> nude bomb would have worked. Uh, number three for you? Uh, number three for me, Piranha Sharks. Oh, okay. Uh, great white sharks bioengineered to be the size of piranhas. How's that weather related? Uh, they break out of their flooding, water, their exotic aquariums, flooding, f- and flood New yeah. York City. Who stars in it? Uh, this is a, another Kevin Sorbo film. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Kevin Sorbo was uh, such a weather guy. You know, it's amazing. I, yeah. What's your number two? Uh, my number two. I'm gonna Hobie this one. It's going to be Bernie the Dolphin and Bernie the Dolphin Two. Oh. Um, those are also Kevin Sorbo films. <laughs> How does that weather? Um, it takes climate place change in the ocean, and it's about uh, a dolphin that's been displaced from the ocean by a tornado. No, do the warming of the water. Oh, and the, the loss of the coral reefs. Did it jump um, over rocks at the end? Uh, Bernie and his sibling mm-hmm. are separated from his family. Oh, due to a weather event, mm. and they need to be reunited. Across two films starring Kevin Sorbo. Wow. It's a part two. A Does two he parter. swim and breathe underwater like Aquaman? Uh, no, but he... I don't want to give it away. Oh. No spoilers here for Bernie the Dolphin or Bernie the Dolphin 2. Speak of Aquaman. T- <laughs> we can hit <have> Bernie <laughs> Dolphin. <laughs> we can have Ber- it's a dead dolphin. It's just a dead dolphin. A red floating around. Kevin Sorbo and Dean Cain. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and in between they have a dolphin on the beach. Yeah, that's right. Shouldn't that be in the water? <laughs> nah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, speaking of Aquaman, I was, read an article today that movie theaters are um, base are hoping like basically they're hoping their money at the end of the year, which is Christmas Day, is a huge day for movies, right? Yeah. And so they're hoping that the holidays are good to them but they're really petrified because the only big film coming out is aquaman 2 and they're not optimistic <laughs> they said they're not looking they're not hoping they're not thinking it's going to do well um shocking i think uh, it'll be better than they than they think it may be better but i don't think a lot of people are going to go to it that's my thought mm. color purple comes out uh wonka comes out i think those are the big three uh let's see here my number two uh, 2012. Um, oh, that was my number one. Ah, put it on the board. Hey, John Cusack, get in this limo and somehow <laughs> get to can, China. Yes, <laughs> and somehow you can leap over mountains and yeah. hills, and the gr- earth is crumbling. But this limo that's 30 feet long, perfectly fine, can move like no other compared to the helicopter stunt. Oh yeah, Come yeah. On completely legit woody harrell said i need you to be crazy done no 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 let me finish the story just be yourself yes i need you to be up in the hills done okay you think there's a conspiracy going on done do i have a shotgun and kill zombies too (laughs) do i have to wear a shirt (laughs) can i wear shorts yeah you can you can just wear shorts you're fine uh what's your number two blake armageddon Oh, how dare you? Wouldn't it have been better to send astronauts up there with drilling equipment? It takes too long. <laughs> they address this. It takes too long to teach them how to drill. It's easier to tr- teach drillers how to be an astronaut. <laughs> but ah. without that movie, we would have never got the Aerosmith song. I don't want to wait. Yeah, right? For tomorrow, <laughs> I can't wait. 
I don't want to miss it's a, a miss thing. thing. Right? And you want to have the animal cracker on the belly? Oh, <laughs> such a great film. Walk this way. <laughs> Talk when you're, this way. way. When you're in space. <laughs> Thunderstruck. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, that's oh, someone else. You got to drill this way. <laughs> TNT. <laughs> Dynamite. Drillers are earth. Blow that world. Asteroid. Sit down, astro nerd. We got it. The and drillers. Two mites. I just like that Steve Buscemi had a machine gun for some reason up on this rock. <laughs> why are you bringing a machine gun? And why is his daughter wearing lingerie while she's sitting on it? I don't understand. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That was a porn version. Oh. That was the one at the Golden Palace or whatever. Oh. oh, how dare you. I love Armageddon. <laughs> Such a bad film. But it's yeah. so great. Billy Bob's in it. And that's, some that's, big names in it. I went to go actually look at this because, you know, I actually seen this on a list of popular. Yeah. Uh, weather related? What well, weather related? Asteroid. <laughs> it's raining asteroids. It's still weather related. Uh, it's coming from the sky, so therefore Remember it's the weather South related. Remember the sea was burning because the asteroid hit it and burned up all the ships in it. That's right. God, that's sad. That I yeah. know that. This one uh, is popular. Like the the fan score is like seventy nine percent, like yeah. almost eighty. But the critics had it like at forty three. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah. This made like two hundred something million. Yeah, uh, and then came out, which I should have done. This is not an honorable mention because I forgot about it until now. Deep Impact yeah. came out at the same time, and they're like, "Yeah, this is a piece of shit <laughs> compared to Armageddon." Um, so, so yeah, yeah. They're, like, they're all copycat movies that come out at the same time. How's it happen? Dante's Peak, Volcano. Remember those two? They came out. Uh, let's all those see. fucking tornado movies. Yeah, Twister and I'm talking about the real ones, not the Sharknado shit. Wizard of Oz? And Storm the Chasers or whatever that is? I don't know. What <laughs> You're just making things up now. Uh, could be. When does the second Twister come out? Uh, same time that Coach comes out. <laughs> the no, it's... They're making a second. Yeah, se- they're making a sequel. They never... I don't know. I think a lot of things got pushed back because of the writers and the actor strikes. Yeah, uh, your number one was 2012? Yeah. <sighs> My number one is quite possibly one of the worst natural disaster movies ever. The core. Hillary Swank, Delroy Lindo. Hey, the core stopped moving. What do you do? Could- We'd all be dead because the magnetic field was- No, no. You have to go down there and launch oh. a nuclear missile at it, <laughs> and that's going to restart it. <sighs> and that's what they did. And it was the most awful thing. Hey, Delroy Lindo, I know you're sacrificing yourself. You're in the middle of the core. Go on out there. You're fine. I'm going to go out there. How is he alive more than 10 seconds? <laughs> like... Now, hold on. Did they take oil drilling specialists and have them act as explosive experts? Or did they take explosive experts and make them drilling scientists? Yes. To go down to the core? (laughs) Yes. I just like that in Armageddon. Hit the button, please. It's another bad joke. I just like the art in Armageddon. They're like, it just takes too long to teach him drilling. (laughs) And Bruce Willis tells them this. And you know what? Billy Bob's like, yeah, you're probably right. What? No! Is anyone fact-checking this? Fact-checking this? Nah, it's fine. He eh. said it. Wait, hold on. How's the weather... How's the core not working weather-related? It is weather-related because they made uh, uh, lightning come up from it because the core stopped. The waters rescinded. Uh, there was tidal waves, hurricanes. The magnetic field, which yes. protects us from a lot of shit, would also stop, too. Yes. But in the movie, it's- they shot a nuclear weapon at it, and it worked. Oh. Well, there you go. Unfortunately, all the soil and the dirt in the world became radioactive. It was creating weather chaos. Yeah. I understand that. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, number one for you? Uh, my number one um, is a TV movie uh, called Lightning Strikes. Uh, it's about a, a man who must save his town from a monster hiding in the lightning, huh. uh, starring Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> a monster it's hiding. Electro? It is Jamie Fox. <laughs> yes. Uh, we did have a uh, couple listener feedbacks today. Doug, number one fan. He only had one. The Last Jedi. There was weather, and it was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the fucking... Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Doug. Last Jedi was awesome. Oh, no, no, it's a Last Jedi, or then... Which that that was the middle movie, right? Yeah, that was with the sand and the the the, the last movie, which was Sky, Rise, of Rise of Skywalker. 
Yeah, you know the 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 Sith planet had a lot of bad weather too. They did. They did. They had a lot of rain too. That, that could have been number one. That could have. Yeah. Did it matter? Because God, that's that last one. Oh. Uh, Pittsburgh nerd. Uh, hello, Sean. He's going to be presenting a floppy award too. Him and Ian. Uh, Sharknado. Oh yeah. Metal tornado. I don't know what that one is, but that sounds amazing. Instead of sharks, they're heavy metal hair bands. <laughs> Walk this way! Talk this way! Ah! In spandex. <laughs> uh, she's a lot of runaway. Uh, an inconvenient truth. <laughs> uh, the day after tomorrow, and I completely forgot about this one, but Jim would probably agree with this, Geostorm. Uh, yeah. That that looked yep. bad. That's a that looked one. bad. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the day after tomorrow. Yeah, p- most people did. Um, that's where New York City floods real quick. That's right? what I talked about earlier with the CGI animals. Oh, the wolves. You're talking. Yes. I was focused on the wolves. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there you go. Uh, there is your top five. Um, let's see here. I think that was all we had. Um, yeah. Bad idea of the week. Um. Dragging your husband back to a brothel after he spent four thousand dollars. Don't do that. Uh, Bad idea number fifteen oh one. Just let you know. You know fifteen oh two is stop asking the internet. Show your mom's boob. Yep, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, Brian, what do you have there, real quick? Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna try to find a quick uh, okay uh, Mad Lib for us to do. Okay. In the meantime, uh, ty- oh, did, did you find one? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right, uh, Blake. Give me a plural <clears throat> noun. <clears throat> Plural noun. Boobs. <laughs> Jason, give me an adjective. Veiny. <laughs> Blake, give me a noun. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good between us two. <laughs> noun, Blake. <laughs> noun. I'm th- uh, <laughs> Brothel. That's a person, place, or thing. That's right. Jason, give me an adjective. Bouncing. Blake, give me an adjective. Oh, that's a verb, isn't it? Bouncy. How about bouncy? What's Blake getting? An adjective. Blake, adjective. Adjective. Um, Into the mic. Adjective. I'm trying. I'm I'm looking through here. Adjective. Uh Adjective. 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 Huh? Adjective. You're not helping here. Adjective. 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 Purple. Shiny. Oh. I'm trying to, I'm looking back at my notes here and trying to think of what we talked about. Jason, give me a noun. A noun. Um, penis. Blake. got veiny and penis. (laughs) Blake, I need another adjective. Another adjective. Um. Uh, uh, another adjective? Yes, please. Silent. Jason, I need an adjective. Loud. Blake, I need a noun. Uh, Twitter. Jason, I need an adjective. Another one? <sighs> um, luscious. Luscious veiny penis. Yeah. Blake, I need person in room. Person in room? Well, there's only two of us. Well, Three of uh, us. Pers- okay, so uh, person is husband, and room is Pentagon Grand. No, no, just a person in a the person room. person in the room. Oh. Blake, Brian, Jason. Oh, uh, I thought a person in a room when I was at the brothel in the Gold Coast. I just gave you an air horn. The intern. Okay. Formerly known as Brian, Gary, Jason. Give me a plural noun. Uh, plural noun. Spiders. Blake, give me an adjective again. How many adjectives need? Large. Jason, give me an adverb. An adverb. Lolly, lolly, lolly. Get your adverbs here. Um. <laughs> Shaking. Lee. Shakingly, yeah. <laughs> Shaking is a verb. <laughs> Shakingly. 
Uh, Blake, I need a noun. <laughs> oh, my noun. God. Bill. And Jason, one more noun. One more noun. Um... <laughs> Bozanza. Bozanza. <laughs> it's more of an adjective. Oh. Buttocks. Buttocks. Wouldn't it be buttock? Yes. Buttock. Buttock. Because. Um, Fine. Buttock. Beer. <laughs> beer. Take the fun out of it. All right. Uh, so this is called Monster Manual oh. Colon oh Demons. Okay. If your party worships dark boobs or in- or investigates veiny talismans, <laughs> you might encounter some demons on your next brothel. <laughs> these Sounds creatures legit. these creatures will take you to the bouncy world and back if you're not shiny. <laughs> demons come from a place called the penis, <laughs> which is an <laughs> <laughs> which is a silent plane. <laughs> Demons follow some loud lords, including Queen of Twitter and the luscious knight and intern. <laughs> luscious knight. <laughs> some spiders, such as warlocks, can have relationships with demons. What? But beware their large powers. If you rush too shakingly into battle with a bill, <laughs> you'll go bill. down in a blaze of beer. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Sounds about right. Yeah, it seemed like that was pretty good. Yeah, uh, thanks, Brian. No, thank you. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> so no. We all know demons come from the penis. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot put that as a title. <laughs> where do come demons on. come from? <laughs> okay, so I got where do demons come from? Uh, not enough meow mix. Bachelor party catnip. Uh, new Hobie adventures. And that's about it. Brian, what uh, you got? What did I write down? Uh, let's see. It's too late to change our name. Uh, we are not a pet store. <laughs> and Hobie colon Bozanza. <laughs> I like that we are not a pet store. <laughs> I like that or a bachelor party catnip. Which one? Which one, Blake? What do you think? Uh, Make a decision. Just say kitty city. <laughs> Oh, I can't. I can't do Kitty City. Hobie, ben- Hobie Bozanza. I don't know how to spell that. It's Bonanza, but you change the N and put a Z there. It's not going to work. C H A R C U T E R R I E. There you go. Roger says goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Listening to Hobie.